And then I think we have everything. Okay. I just want to test out if everything in Twitch is fine. Because sometimes probably I have no sounds, something else. Just in case if someone can hear me, if everything works fine. Okay. But we did yesterday, just a small recap. We set up our mood board. But I think now it's time uh, to actually try to draw it. But before we draw it, we need actually to warm ourselves up. Right now I did not warm myself up and I want to teach you actually today, now, about perspective and shapes instead of doing the actual work. I think it's very important to understand those two things. It's not going to be highly an advantage, but at least it's going to be in, in a way where I basically explain a few things much more, but not too much about perspective because this is an, a little bit of an advanced class. So try to understand that I don't try to go deep in perspective. Probably after this course, after this class, uh, Intro to Environment Art, I probably do one with perspective. But right now, I want to focus on my uh, my concept, right? So let me actually do that. So today, what we're going to approach is perspective and shape. This is the thing, and a little bit uh, I explain about pipeline, the, a couple of difference how it could work. In case if you have uh, suffer a big budget problem, problem, and a few other things. But let me actually start with the first one. There are a couple of things that you need to consider if you make concept art in perspective. You know there is one point up to five point eight point perspective, but the thing is we usually use one or two points. Most of the time two point because it's one of the most uh, simplistic ways to approach our paintings and we don't need so much to do. So the most important thing when it comes to perspective is setting up a horizon line. And the horizon line is basically tries to indicate uh, what's under it, you know and what's all right. And this is the horizon line. We also call it, uh, I think, perspective line, you know, middle perspective line, because sometimes you have two, but don't, don't get overwhelmed with that. This is, right now, none of your concern. Stick with the horizon line. HS. And let me set up just one point here and try to explain what this one point action means. It's basically the vanishing point which uh, we see everything vanished from the horizon. Because if we have a box here, or a plate, or a plane, sorry a plane, it vanishes here to, to this direction. This line, by the way, is being called uh, axis. Axis line. Uh, which probably uh, 
you know it much more if the horizon line is not being seen and let me say this is our picture. Photoshop, please. And let me say our painting is like that and we see everything here under the ground. This are the, the most important things if it comes to that. But I, but yeah, that's basically around about it. Uh, but you need to remember at least at the beginning that now it's time to practice those with shapes. And I think uh, we're gonna take that out. And let me say and try. You hear me, lag? Am I lagging, by the way? Because if everything, okay, okay, I thought I really lag. Uh, let me go back, okay. But we do. But I usually practice. What right now is at the beginning with shapes. I try at least to to do something with shapes in the perspective. And everyone knows if we set up our horizon line that we draw usual boxes and other stuff. But let me explain much more about the shapes that we come and use in every painting. And this is, uh, those are the three shapes. The first one is a rectangle. Because right now it's in 2D. Rect angle. The other one is the triangle. And then the other one is the circle. It's not a sphere, it's it's a circle. Rectangle. But now we need to somehow translate those things into 3D, you know? And in 3D... Uh, you missed nothing, I basically explained. Horizon line. Uh, bam, summer. Horizon line. Vanishing point. And we right now try, try to approach those things. And this is the axis, this is the vanishing point. But we try try right now to practice and... But the thing is, you guys don't understand, uh, for example, the rectangle. Or the box, or how it's called. So we need to somehow translate this into that, right? And the best way is to translate it in 3D. Which... And then explain it in a much more simplistic way. This one cuts itself into two different types of shapes. Uh, the rectangle became, becomes the box. Okay, I need a lot more practice. Then also a cylinder, because if we just take the cylinder like this. It's still going to be a rectangle, but as soon as we turn it into 3D, it's a cylinder. Now the triangle becomes a cone and also a pyramid. And then this one becomes in, into a sphere which goes in every direction. To not get confused by it. This one gets in one, two, three direction. It goes up, down, left and right. And this one goes also in every direction. And this is why we practice boxes and cylinder way too much. I think in my opinion, it's really important 
to practice those sh shapes. Most of the people practice just a box, which is a really sad thing, in my opinion, because this is also a really, really important thing. And, and there is also another thing. This one splits also into a different thing, which is the lips. It's just a plane, but let me call it ellipse, even though it's in 2D. But if we have a direction, for example, let me take that and let me say and pretend this is the bottom of the of a can. If we go again around it and make it a little bit smaller, and we only take it from the outside, combine it from the outside, then you have a can, basically. And you only need to follow this direction non-stop. To make it also for shortening and practice those in from the lips, you make one small, one big one. I think this is the best way to actually learn for shortening. To set up the line and practice that millions of times. And I use ellipses sometimes uh, in my environment and that's why, why it's one of the reasons to practice that. Because it needs to be perfect. Perfect aligned from the height. Because if you treat it like a box or like a plane, it should look little like that. From like a rectangle plane. Uh, let me actually try and do a uh, practice those boxes in perspective. Right now we don't use one point, two point and three point because the most important thing is I think freehand first. And what is better than to explain, uh, there are different types of perspective. Normal perspective, which is only the perspective. Orthographic. And isometric. What's about that, Kiwi? Oh, okay. I also going to post this, so don't worry. Uh, if you want, because I'm going to do it again. Way more beautiful, so don't worry about it. Uh, so, perspective, and the best expla uh, explanation is one point, you know, it has one point, two point, three point, depending how the horizon is aligned, in which direction where the camera is focused, because you can probably only see this one point in this one direction, usually for us human. We have always, we always switch between two point and one point and sometimes uh, one point and three point as human. And we have a, f I think a 50, 50 millimeter vanishing uh, POV in our eyes. But I can only assume that right now I don't know the right information. But anyway, I think perspective. Uh, is much more with the horizontal line versus orthographic. The word says uh, itself auto. It's about orientation. The line in the middle. What what is the line in the middle of the cylinder? What is its purpose? The line in the middle of the cylinder is basically the directional. Because if you try to have on the direction, because sometimes you want to do the, those things in isometric or orthographic 
the point and I going to explain autographic and isometric now and why it's important. Uh, autographic and I can basically show it with uh, a triangle. It's basically front, side, which the side is basically like this, you know, which it looks completely different in a way. We just look in one side here, which is the front part, back, which we could completely make it dark, for example, up and down. And it probably looks like this down. So basically, the autographic is much more about maps versus isometric. Isometric. And I'm sorry for my worst writing in history. I tried uh, my best to actually uh, make it write it better. But anyway, isometric, if we have a box, it has no horizon line. Uh, one of the best examples is if we look at isometric, let's see, yeah. Isom an isometric exercise is a formal exercise. Okay, now let's look at paintings, yeah, at drawings. I think this is the best explanation when it comes to isometric. There is no horizon line or line and it goes on into to direction, you know? And it has actually free di direction when it comes to that. Because if I put a box here, I draw let me pretend I draw right now a, a box in perspective, okay? This one is in perspective. Versus. Versus this box. Is non-stop in isometric view. Everything stays the same. Both have all the time the same direction. It doesn't matter where you go, it non-stop has the same direction. Versus this one, the perspective goes somewhere here and is aligned somewhere. This one has a horizon line versus this one has no one, no uh, horizon line. And most of uh, this perspective is being used in pixelated games or yeah, pixelated games and other mobile kind of companies. They use that very, uh, very more often. Uh, but this is I think way too advanced in my opinion. Uh, I think at the beginning you should stick with perspective and orthographic view instead of isometric. Isometric is really a hard one uh, because you have only directions versus okay this one has it too but at least you know where the, uh, the vanishing point somehow somewhere is of course. So let me actually practice uh, the box itself. What I try right now to do is a one point perspective. Let's put the vanishing point here, horizontal line, and what I practice are boxes. That's the only thing what we do. Uh, usually it's non-stop aligned like that. I think the easiest way is to draw a line and it needs to be perfect. This is actually the best way to practice uh, your accuracy in 
terms of drawing. Nice. I think usually I do it with the shift button, but I think for this course I use that. I should probably use that. There's another way. Uh, if you guys have Photoshop, you can basically set up a horizon line, then go to this tool, polygon tool, you set it up to pixel, and then you go to this wheel, which called star. And the side could be 90% or maybe more, depending on how, how much you want. Let me add 20, only 20. And you guys are going to be surprised what happens. We have now a horizon line with perfect aligned axis points, which is a really amazing tool if you guys have uh, Photoshop. It helps you do things way more faster. But let me uh, draw now, now a few boxes into those lines. So the thing is, uh, it has always this kind of direction. And it comes to the uh, to the one point perspective. The only direction which uh, you need to care is this one. And I make it red for you guys, uh, probably later. Let's actually do the box, okay? And I think, in my opinion, this is a really good way to practice. I practice that usually on on paper. Because I don't like Photoshop, you can pretty much cheat right now. And it's the best program to cheat. But usually you should totally do it uh, without any shift or other lines. Uh, let's do one up. We just follow the axis. Then make another line here. Then take it out. You see, I I do non-stop the outside line, outside line, because the perspective basically shows us, okay, it's, it's behind. I don't need much more things to do, but in case of that, if you see it much more direct, this is what happens inside of it, usually, and I actually did it wrong. If I'm honest, this one point is wrong. Because it needs to be perfect aligned. Nice. Nice, okay. It still is wrong. Why? Why is it wrong? Oh, probably because of this line. Let's do it again. Oh yeah, this one, this one always first. Number one, number two, and number three. And I, I did it wrong again, I see. It needs to be perfect in this point. Because as soon as you are wrong, also your perspective or your box, it's not going to fit into that. You can also control it uh, with an X if everything is aligned. Because I think, in, in my opinion, the best way to break down a box is by drawing it literally like that and having an X. And if those two lines are creating an X here, then you have the pers perfect perspective, uh, the perfect box, I think. Let's actually see. So 
something must be off with me. Okay. This is one way to practice. I usually set up a timer where I do it in 10 minutes instead of 20. I think in my opinion it's way more, uh, way more faster. Let's see if it, it's right in this way. Let's set up a point, okay. We can also put some points here. Yeah, this one is right. Let's try another one. Behind. Always the back side first. Yeah, this one is right. Probably because it's so much in front of the axis that it doesn't work. I want really to see why it does not work. So let's test it out. This is number two, okay. Behind, from the side. Okay. Probably because I, one of those lines didn't hit it in the right way. And that's why I, I screwed all over again and again. But at least you can have, you have those two boxes, uh, you know, 10 boxes, do 10 boxes. And you guys can also create different kinds of sizes. You don't need to stick uh, with the usually normal one. We can also cut it into a different direction. But then we need to figure out how the other one works. And we need non-stop to cut it and to correct it, actually, make an X. And if it nails it exactly in the middle, then you are right, like this. In case if you do uh, I think the best example is uh, this thing right here. Actually, let me do a new layer. Because you need non stop uh, to do it from the side, down, right, down, and then go again. And sometimes this. This clearly happens that we have this direction non-stop aligned. Everything is aligned as you probably see in most of the production, uh, in most of the one point perspective. We have non-stop this layer. Does that help you guys out? to actually understand the first point perspective. Because everything is aligned, doesn't matter. The only thing what you need, guys, is practice those perspectives. It's really, really hard. I understand that. Um, yeah. Let me actually finish that. And as you probably see from here, you you don't need to care about those two directions, but much more about the axis of the direction. 
This is one way to practice. The other way is, and this is now freehand because it's way more harder. We have now a perspective where we basically have a horizon line. And probably one here that goes down. You guys know all those practice. Uh, there's actually a picture over the internet that basically shows your free hand. I make it a little bit faster. Usually, you, sh you guys should totally not do it faster. And probably also because I didn't practice uh, right now or warm myself up. Because this is the right way to do it. You look at the point, try to imagine how the line is going to be, and then you make it with one stroke. You try everything to do with one stroke, because this is Andrew Loomis' method. If you try to do this, what I did before. But it looks like Andrew Loomis, which is totally not. It's line of chaos. Because there are different approaches in how to draw in perspective. One, which is the technical aspect of it. And I can probably show you that with a thing. Yeah. This one is really technical. Everything is been setting up all those lines. Are crazy together. This is really technical but later on and if you do that in perspective uh, you have literally everything set up and then everything works out for you in the technical aspect aspect of it. You can draw a hallway with it you know it goes probably up goes down follows the door the direction of the point, point, maybe goes from the side, you know. Maybe I take it a little bit from here. Nice. And based on that, go down, nice. And again, and now we have an entire bridge which goes up to this horizon line. This is really technical. And it doesn't matter if it's one point or two point or three points. In chaotic way, if I would do that, usually the horizon, I mean, everything is already aligned. Let me actually do that with this small trick. Thank you. And at that point, I try to be really sketchy with it, but I follow follow every single direction what it provides me from the point of the vanish. So basically, if I try to make some some technical stuff, you know, I know exactly, okay, I need to go in this direction if I try to sketch. And it's just a sketch. Later on, I can then go go over that and actually try to apply it way more better. Maybe here is a, a front house, okay, maybe this is a door which goes down below into the horizon line. And this is much more, people call it the Feng Zhu approach. You draw in chaos, but you draw with direction chaotic direction which I think is is really good if it comes to sketchy stuff if you really try to sketch stuff out instead of doing all the things same happens to Jester if it comes to Jester uh, it's not that chaotic but uh, it's much more about a compositional thing if it comes in my mind with Jester. Because let me pretend and we have already our Viking house. We want to have 
really gestures into it. And gesture, by the way, gesture is not only in characters, it's also in environment. Because I can basically basically squint, you know, push this box around like a gesture, but in the same way having those directions into that. It has a flow into into the whole thing. I can create it non-stop to gesturize everything. And it goes in on only one direction, which is really beautiful. I think in my opinion, people for, forget that that gesture exists everywhere. And I actually balance that with chaotic I, drawing of Feng Zhu, which is honestly only chaotic. People call it non-stop Feng Zhu, I don't know why. Even though it sounds like he came up with it, but the truth is, no. Uh, people use that most of the time for sketch. If they sketch things. Uh, intentional drawing. Intentional perspective drawing. When it comes to that, The, it's much more in the technical, into the technical aspect. But we, we kind of don't do that technical. We much more have a direction now, how everything works, for example. Even though we, we already set up your, our horizon line, you know. Oh God, that's the worst horizon line ever. I'm sorry, I, if, if it comes to talking and doing this stuff, it's way more harder, if I'm, on, if I'm honest. So let's put on this thing. Uh, for example, I know exactly what I want to draw. I do that. For example, immediately a protest. And you don't see that crazy lines uh, everywhere where... I set up the box, okay, there's another box, there's another one. It goes back, back, same thing, back, really technical. Everything what you see is really technical, like uh, Scott Robertson, uh, Robertson's book, How to Draw. Uh, I think I, I made it in the wrong perspective should be here much more. Yeah, and then it goes up. But you guys get it, right? If it comes to technicality stuff. But now I, if I know exactly what I need to do, this is a complex a uh, different kind of approach where you immediately draw it. You know you know exactly where the point is aligned and this comes with practice actually. And we do that, you guys do that a lot. Beginner do this a lot, which is the hardest thing. And I think in my opinion, uh, only do that if you draw. If uh, if you sketch, if you know what your intentions are in terms of drawing, that's what I meant. Because uh, let me try and pretend I do that. I do that now with boxes, and we do that non-stop, but without horizon line. But what happens if, uh, in one point perspective, but what happens if we? We have a technical difficulty here. Can you probably do do it? Maybe, you know? But then you have all these big mistakes where your, your fundamentals are basically showing that you need a lot of practice to do that, if I'm honest. So I would not recommend that. Use that only as a warm-up. 
let me say you have 10 minutes time to only do that, which is absolutely okay. But if you if you do that in your paintings, don't do that. Uh, I think, at least in my opinion, I I don't want to to force you to not do it. You know, it's just based on my observation. It's actually way more harder to do that at the beginning because you you guys have no sense of perspective if it comes to that and you guys need to start those things non-stop out but now let we go back to to the practice part of it usually I practice for an hour those things and I think it's the most important thing uh, I think yeah let me do it with cylinders now we just try as best as we can to line those things into that and make it thicker now let me try to do that in one get go nice now maybe one down let me line that from this kind of point I need only to nail that, which I didn't, but at least both are right. I don't know how to move. Okay, this one is not right. So we need to do it again. Another way how to do it if it comes to technicality part is if you try to make a box, which goes in this direction. Actually, let me erase that. And if you look, I try right now to make only another line. And based on this line, I need to nail it from here in the middle, then go again up. Same here, because now you, you create a sense of, okay, how it's really aligned. Because the further you go, uh, the less details you are going to see and the farther is the box, of course. But I think this is uh, the most easiest approach when it comes to drawing a box. Maybe perfect, let's see. Let's test it out. It needs to be perfect aligned with an X. Beautiful. Now from this one, we try to create inside of it a circle. Which is the hardest thing ever. Because the, the perspective is so crazy aligned. But there is another way how to do it. Okay, bye. Uh, CVs. We see us later. But there is another way. Uh, you can also do it in only one direction. And then choose the other one. But try immediately to make it in one stroke. It takes time. Don't worry. We have a plenty of time to do that. The other direction. And it needs to be perfect. Uh, I was a, about that, yeah. That's the only thing that's wrong. And now I think we made a perfect circle <laughs> inside a box, uh, a plane. But there's another way. Uh, in case of calculation, because let me say this is something, you know, and a type of object which goes up down and it's somewhere in the house you know I don't know what it's called I think pipe let me pretend and see that as a pipe I think the best way is to actually see it like a box itself the pipe because a pipe is basically like a box when you see it in a 
2D space. And if it's right, we can also correct it if it's right. Which totally is, I'm surprised. I thought uh, it's wrong. Wow. I don't give myself too much props when it comes to it. But this is also a way to practice it. And you can make different types of things out of it. Now we go back to shapes. And again to shapes, I'm sorry. And let's switch actually to a different one. Not this one, There's, yeah, that one. So we know how to translate circles, triangles, rectangles in shape. Uh, let me actually copy that somewhere so that we know everything about it. When it comes to shapes, we need to understand a, a couple of things. shape, how to translate it into uh, 3D. Uh, the shape hierarchy in terms of paintings, drawing or reference. Because you want to do a house or you want to do a podest or something else or a tree, doesn't matter. Even a tree is the most important shape part. Of it and we need to understand the hierarchy how it works. The third thing is uh, volume. I think volume, many people misunderstand it. Volume basically shows you, and I can maybe uh, take out my 3D one out, uh, my 3D program out after this. Volume is basically understanding the surface where everything goes. It is a crazy surface, non-stop. And everything is aligned together to walk in a perfect direction. I can do that on boxes, it's actually really hard to do that on this one. They are aligned together. It's basically like a wireframe. If you treat it like a wireframe, you have a much more easier time to see everything. Because what happens if I have the box like a wireframe in terms of volume? Uh, let me actually do one. One, two. One, two, three. One. Two, three. One, two, three. Okay. And we have a ton of wireframes here. Based on our perspective, we can actually make it completely different. For example, I want different parts to be sticking out. And depends what I want to actually produce, what type of object it is. No, let me try and pretend this is a building. Uh, I want this building and this action not right. I should actually do it one more time up. Uh, I think now it's right. Yeah, because they need to be the same. If it's not, uh, it basically fails. You fail with the whole proportional thing, with your whole volume. Let me now try it and pretend uh, I want this thing to be stick out. Together, I want to put it up. So the best way to actually do that is doing again those things. If you practice another box, you know, 
if you practice that, you have a much more easier time to set up uh, environment, props, and other type of things. Because this is the purpose for it. Uh, to do different types of things and maybe set this one up. Let's take this out. I want this box out in a direction. Mm, is it right? It doesn't feel right. It feels actually wrong. Okay, now I know why it feels wrong. Because it's in a different perspective. At least this one. If it would be like this, then it would work. But yeah, let's take our program. A small program out, which is Blender. Because in Blender, I can basically show it, it a way more easier. How that could work and how it does volume manipulates all those things together. It is a really hard topic, but it, as soon as you get get how volume works, then you can probably do a whole entire gesture and learn how these forms work. You know, in those perspective, it's a free perspective. Great. And everything works in one way after another. You have probably a really crazy perspective like this. Goes down. Goes down again. Again. So this is what volume basically does to to a character, creature, uh, environment, it doesn't matter. Nice. Uh, let me do a really fast one. I hope uh, I have everything here. Nice. I think this one is the most important tool. Control R. No, I'm not interested in this. Let's press move. Control R. It should be Control R or Shift R. Yeah, it's Control R. We have one, maybe four. I always press Control T. I don't know why. Oh, I already have it here. Okay. Now you. Um, wait a minute. Now you basically see everything is like a normal box, you know? This is basically like a wireframe. It works like a wireframe, like a box. And let me try and pretend those polygons or faces are, are those things. Uh, actually, let me go to Hyperpoly. Uh, Ctrl C, no, Shift D. Maybe Shift D. I need to find the selection. I'm sorry, I am a little bit new. Oh, space, okay. I need only the faces to be selected. And let me do the same thing here. If I take this out. And I think this one. It's happened to, to see, okay, this in a volume type of thing. You see that? I think that's the best explanation ever. Because everything is in one one thing. And it could make you understand much more uh, if you in terms of studying characters, environments uh, or other things, depending what you do. So uh, 
Now let's go back to to the list. Okay, nice. So we understand volume, but uh, we understand it in 3D way, but do we understand it in much more in a compositional way, you know? Uh, I think the best way to, to practice those is uh, these three things also, freehand. You draw millions all about them. That. Maybe in a different type of direction. And now, before I forget it, based on a hierarchy, we, we work with big shapes. Always big shapes. I think this one is a big shape, but if it comes to a smaller shape, okay. Let me pretend that this is a medium shape. And then you have a way more smaller one, which is the, actually the middle one. This one is the small shape. So we have kind of a hierarchy inside those sh uh, shapes if it comes to 3D parts. At the same time, it works perfectly with volume. As soon as you understand volume, you can go to the big parts and do probably environments. Because even in environments, and I just try to pretend to do a really fast environment, okay. Let's actually do one with black, red and blue. Probably green. Let's add here red. This is probably the big shape. <clears throat> big shape, yeah, big shape. Now we chose a middle shape, which is probably the rock thing, formation, here. And probably uh, the other one, which is way more darker, are the small details of it. And we always come to, to this hierarchy level, type of level. And we have that non-stop in our drawings when it comes to shapes. Uh, you guys, can we ask, should we take your break? Or was it a lot? Or is it a little bit too much for you guys? Because it feels like I jump non-stop ahead of you. It's a really hard topic, I understand. Shape and perspective are fundamental things. And if it comes uh, together with uh, an environment, it's way more harder. And probably those are this part. We have big, medium, now I need one for small. Probably those are the small things. And it could be really simplified. Meanwhile, this one has a ton of details and it's combined together with, with different variations of blue. Probably yellow. It's uh, That's way too vibrant. Let's go on orange. I don't want to hurt you guys' eyes. Now a brown one. Because maybe there's another type of thing. And we have foreground, background and midground non non-stop. If it comes to that. Nice.
again this is the hierarchy when it comes to to drawing details versus less details and we always have that depending what it is um, foreground I wrote it wrong this is foreground foreground which is no not foreground I'm sorry my brain went off car probably I need a break this is big big shape this one is I think okay I need to add much more details here to make it way more clear what is big and what is middle because it wasn't clear enough uh, I think it's it's okay now uh, this one is big medium is this one medium again medium and small small and again small so we have always big medium and small shapes and by the way uh, before I forget it this is the foreground and we have always those things in every picture foreground uh, midground and the extra shorts make them very less saturated I don't want to burn you guys eyes and this is the background If you understand your shapes and actually practice rocks and all that other type of stuff because in that box I can basically create an entire rock and it could look somehow and after I finished but at least, uh, at least it fits the rock inside that box. Uh, I mean, the box fits inside. Okay. Let me just say the rock is inside of the box. If I get confused with it. Probably the same direction. I can also change that. Nice. So we know those type of things. Uh, there are a couple of things how to practice that but based on a painting uh, the way how to study is actually just straight up taking some pictures and make really simplified paintings out of that uh, let me try one out it's just to understand how everything works I think this one is way too much in my opinion but it works. With this you surely can learn a shape hierarchy and how it works with all your things together. And you don't need to make a perfect copy of it as I said. Basic shapes are much more important. And actually where to cut it, where do you see what this foreground, background and midground. In my opinion this is I'm sorry this is foreground it comes to that part then you say see midground all over it here until to the door and this one 
is background. It's all the way here, all the time here in front. Uh, or it could not be in front, it could also be like a shape, like this. Then it creates many, much more shapes. No. This is a basic explanation how you guys can see uh, in pictures, foreground, midground, and background. Sometimes, as I said, it's actually hard to see the backgrounds, uh, the foregrounds, sometimes. But let me actually do one. And we do that just for 10 minutes. Uh, I actually want to keep everything. Okay. Let's just try and pretend I draw. I know probably how it could look like, but I'm never going to be able to establish everything. Back door, back door. At least if I capture it with colors. It makes things way more easier if you draw it for you, for yourself. I have only five minutes to do that. Maybe less. I keep that in mind in case if it's happened to be way more worse. Because then I think about details and I want to prevent details. As less details as possible. Then later on add much more to it. Oh, I like this one. It's actually really simplified. Okay, nice. As I said, the more details you do, the more complicated it gets. So I want to have it really simplified instead of having all the details into the place. Doing details at the beginning is, is a nightmare. So don't even try to do it. It's way more harder. And usually people don't do that. But painted for about 10, 20 years. So don't try to see everything in details, try to see everything in shapes. Because it's it works way more faster. Even in drawing. I can also draw that, yes. Or I can learn about colors and lights. Because later on, if we draw, we, we draw under it. And then later on, a little bit over it, and that's basically it. Uh, the way how a concept could work, you know. So we don't need all that crazy details. Probably Illustrator need, need it, but not us. Uh, probably a little bit higher. Yeah, a little bit higher. They should be seen. Nice. You slowly get into that point where you are then comfortable with, with it and then after it you can draw a ton of stuff. In case if you want only to paint your characters or environment, you can actually also do that. It's a perfect way of ex ex uh, establishing everything in your paintings. Actually, I want your black, black, your black too. Too much light here. Uh, too less. Goes down, goes up, nice. And now I can add the rest of the shape, which is medium shape. We try right now medium shape. The small shapes are 
basically the details of this one. Those are small. The statue is small. It has a bunch of small shapes. And it's actually way more harder to do that. But here on, I think I'm gonna stop with that. I think I did a pretty much good job for the beginning. <laughs> At least in my opinion. But having it right, in the right way, is actually way more harder. And then you do probably five of them. You can do five of them when it comes to understanding foreground, midground, and background. Another thing. Uh, where are we? I think on this point we take a break because we understand volume, shape, hierarchy, uh, big, medium, small, then 3D, uh, how to translate things in 3D. So yeah, the rest of the time, uh, after the break, I going to explain uh, about what happens in game industry, how what happens if we are in a tight deadline or in a little bit of a short deadline where we need to do a concert for two or three days and I need to take care of uh, take in mind what's happening uh, with my concept and who to takes it and what it is. Uh, we're gonna talk about that after the break. Meanwhile, I'm also going to to practice those boxes, ellipses, and basically line weight. The way how lines are flowing. Line flow, line weight. Okay, so this is in five minutes. Yeah, five minutes.
Let's open that up. So, let me talk about the game industry. Meanwhile, I'm going to practice shapes and line drawing. So, first off, uh, let me try and pretend I am being tasked to do a dragon. And I simply know how to do a dragon. I just do the simplest thing. It's much more safe to do the simplest thing because let me try and pretend I do a dragon with with feeders, you know, like a puppet guy or like an owl, this kind of thing. And then the 3D artist needs to do that and he has a much more harder time to do it because it's, it takes maybe a month or two months to do that, you know, with the oil, you know, he has so much feeders on it, which makes everything much more complicated. Uh, in terms of normal dragon, he has then a way more easier time. He already established, knows how the dragon could look like. He knows the skin of it. And then it goes probably to the animation department. Then he need uh, this guy needs to figure out how he makes that all feeder, how to animate those things, which is a may, way more harder approach. Meanwhile, in uh, with a normal dragon, he has a much more easier time uh, to animate those things because he just need to focus on muscles. But with an uh, old dragon, you know, all, you know, those kind of things with them big eyes. Uh, it's actually way more harder. He needs to animate the feeders, he needs to animate the skin, how it retracts itself. Uh, probably a, a rigging, a model. He needs to rig the model. And now it goes to the animation department, which uh, uh, I mean in the material department, which is texturing and all that other stuff, focusing on those things. I think in my opinion it's very very hard to do that, uh, especially when it comes comes to a dragon what looks like very fantasy, but at least not that fantasy where where it's based on mythology, right? But what happens if it's complete outside the box? We need probably four or five months to figure out how <laughs> how this even works. Probably even the sound guy uh, needs to figure out, okay, how does an old dragon sound like, you know? That's, that's one of the big problems that occurs, uh, especially when it comes to time management in the company and where I need to produce things. So sometimes uh, playing it safe it's always good. As long if he asks about it, to not play it safe, or you can ask him to not play it safe. You can pretty much do that. When it comes, but when it comes to the old dragon, <laughs> imagine the rig team suffering from this, from this, or the three D guy suffering from from that. It's a really hard thing to do, especially. Uh, it takes a lot of budget and a lot of time to do that. Come on, what's wrong with me? Again. Now, let me try to do something really simplified. Let me say I draw, uh, I make a concept about a house in the middle age. And this thing is already established based on the history. Once again, we talk about that, but this time we take uh, environment as example now to make you much more understandable why we need to do those things and 
why uh, what's the difference between making complicated a complicated design versus a a easy one we we draw right now a a medieval Nordic house where all this mythology, where all this architecture already exists in our reference. I think every artist that works in the company can now take reference from it, how it looks like. It is much more or less to animate, but if it comes to fantasy, let me say he, it has flags on it or it burns, or we do an elfish house, kind of house, you know, really fancy, like, uh, it's much more harder to do that because he needs probably to animate uh, or texturize something that doesn't exist. Then I need to create my own textures for him probably, or he needs to create those uh, ones for the game itself. And sometimes it happens that those kind of games that are basically based on fantasy are most of the time uh, not realistic. They are really stylized when it came uh, plays into that role. The hardest thing to do is something that what we need to invent. It's like a library. Li uh, you know, you know those things where you have a start, you know, and an end. This one is based on fantasy, okay, and then it has, it goes everywhere. And we need somehow to figure out where, where it goes. Let me say this one is from fantasy environment and you go here, okay, nice, you figure everything out, okay. You go up, oh, okay, there's a problem, got it. Now you need to go back or, and you go down and then, oh, and this one takes probably two weeks or more, maybe a month, maybe much more, depending how big uh, the culture should be. Eventing a culture is way more harder than taking a culture based on reference. And that's why I I told you guys to, uh, that we, I basically explained the other thing, which is called, uh, why is it harder to do that? Well, maybe because we need to, to create our own culture, which is so hard. It is the hardest thing possible. Uh, this one is not the right one. Which one is it? Uh, not this one. I explained yesterday way too much. Oh yeah, this one. That's why it's the easy route. We play safe. Always safe. Never go crazy with it. And if you go crazy, that means, okay, the budget is triple A or double A. If it's indie, they make it most of the, and if it's fantasy, they make most of the time uh, simplified things, you know, cartoonic things. If it's a sci-fi project, they basically get generate those stuff in a much more simplistic way. For example, look at uh, Sky or something, I don't know the name right now. But that project failed really hard and it's uh, generating, generates planets, at least that's what uh, uh, I was being told about the game. In the same Time comes also with the bu uh, with a budget thing. Imagine you have a budget on your uh, on the project where it's and we are not to play by the way. We are still in indie, and now we need also to to take in mind our colors. You know, he wants a really vibrant one, but it's impossible sometimes. But if he is a really good game director or an art director, he would 
totally say don't make it vibrant we don't have the time for it because all of my stuff as you probably see based on my portfolio is not that vibrant it's actually really saturated uh, maybe because of the time frame or maybe because of the budget what I have it plays so much uh, into that where we actually don't focus around it and I think it's an important fact uh, an important fact uh, plays it always plays budget and time management especially when it comes because you need to retract you need to know how to ret retract uh, based on your color theory, light theory, you know, or the way how you draw, which is way, uh, which one is way more faster, drawing or painting. Okay, I say drawing uh, because you can immediately establish a building. Uh, I did this one, I did this one, okay. Uh, let me let me now talk about fundamentals. I think fundamentals is the most important part of uh, our our work ethic, uh, our workflow, especially when it comes to warming up those things. Because I always think, okay, I just need to do it for an hour or four hours, but I never go angry with it. Try to relax because it takes a long time to actually do all of this kind of stuff in the boxes in a really accurate accurate way. It takes a long time to actually study perspective. It comes in so much in, into play where you learn about, okay, uh, visual storytelling with... Uh, what is it called? Visual storytelling, I think. Composition, yes, composition. And knowing how composition works, okay, it takes another probably a week or two, or probably a month, or probably a year, if you fully want to learn it. That's why many people, I think, in my opinion, it would be a lot more easier if you would focus on uh, around a specific task and not change it. A year could happen if you study a year composition and doesn't matter if it's painted or based on storytelling, you know, with simple shapes. And it probably takes you a year to actually fully learn that with characters and all this other stuff that goes into play. Especially when it comes to those kinds of things. Uh, second homework. Let's we do just a bunch of ellipse. Uh, the third thing what I want to talk about is, oh uh, no, we still at the second because I really enjoy doing my fundamentals. They are so easy, and I just need to practice those for one hour before I paint environment or if I draw draw environment. Or for example, characters. I need to focus on gesture, the way how it gestures, or anatomy, for just one hour. I know I trick myself, my brain, to tell, uh, I tell myself I do that for one hour, and then slowly it gets to a second hour, and I say to me, oh, another hour, it's fine. I, have on, I do it for, one, uh, for another hour. What could possibly go wrong if I do it for another hour? And then you add another hour into that. You slowly trick your brain. Um, I learned that based on a video. It's called Kaijo. And it's a technique uh, where, where the Japanese use uh, to probably trick their minds. Because it's just... What is the hardest thing to do? It's just taking a pen and just draw a line or just a circle because that's basically it is that's your entire task of the day just to do that just putting take your pen and just draw and just do a circle it is probably the hardest thing but once you do it 
you think about it, okay, but how about uh, another circle? And another one? Or probably how about a box? And you do that non-stop. And I think in warming yourself up based on what you are doing is also an important factor that comes into play. Especially when uh, you know exactly what your plan is, what you are going to draw for today. You know, for example, you want, you know, you draw characters for today. You do gestures and probably anatomy. You just pick the pen up, take a reference. It's just one the reference. Or probably you, te you do gestures without reference just once, you know. Like this, I have the power of the universe. Or probably stick figures. And then you think about it, hey, what's happened if I do it with a reference? Okay, you take your reference out and then you trick your brain basically into believing it's just one thing. Same happens if you wake up. It's just an amazing thing. And, uh, the technique. Drawing those lines and circles basically teach you the direction. You know? For example, you you want to draw pipes. I draw one here, one here, one circle here, another one here, and probably I could, could go smaller. You know? Small. Then I draw from up. You draw always from up based on the pipes. You go from this direction now. And you try as accurate as possible you to do. Because sometimes you need to draw pipes, okay? Or arms. Uh, because if I do right now my character, you know, and everything is based on, on a stick figure, right? These pipes could actually help you really much out to see, for example, the arm, you know, another arm, maybe another pipe, uh, another cylinder, sorry, this probably could be a cylinder, gesturize probably this cylinder, and so on. This is what it tries to tell you. So you you basically do this non-stop. It's way more a way more easier process to do this kind because now you can make it based on mannequins and see what's wrong with it. And I'm sorry if right now I suck at uh, gestures because I don't have a gesture. And I didn't practice gesture right now. I practice for environment because intention is really important when it comes to environment uh, or when it comes to practice. Uh, those elements, what you want actually to do. So yeah, practice, but practice with intention. Or warm yourself up. Don't say practice, because I think, and that's at least in my opinion, that practice is a word that we use uh, to take it for granted a little bit, because it's it, it sounds like a hard word and how long does it take to practice? I don't know, a year, two, two years, you know? So I say non-stop warming yourself up an hour or probably just for five seconds. And then I tricked my mind into believing that actually. Uh, and then I draw for probably 10 hours or probably 16 or probably 20, depending on what, what I need to do. It is a really nice thing, if I'm honest. We are only at the second hour. Incredible. Uh, what did I not practice? Yeah, cylinders. Let's do cylinders. And die for shortening. Your practice with so I think, in my opinion, practice comes always with a, a feeling that of comfortable, being comfortable about 
those stuff. Because the more you are uncomfortable with it, the more you are frustrated. So you need to think, trick yourself into believing that it takes time. So you don't have to worry with it. You have an ent your entire lifetime to learn that. So trick yourself in, hey, let's just start it right now. Instead of uh, being frustrated about it. Just believe. Believe in yourself and make it for a week, you know. Practice that for a week. Warm yourself up for a week. It is not wrong to warm yourself up or learning how to do uh, crazy kinds of shapes where this probably could be a character if I look like that, you know, if you see it. An armor, armor guy, you know, with a big, big war hammer, you know, basically like this. And I just, based on shapes, I do that. I know exactly I, I need those three things to do it. Just to get an idea how it looks like, which is really beautiful. I don't need to do it really beautiful right now because I don't try to uh, to aim for details. I try to aim for understanding what what I actually see in my paintings or drawings, especially when it comes to a really complicated drawing like my Dark Souls thing. I needed to do some 3D with uh, I think 3ds Max and then. Uh, add, added everything on uh, I think this is the program yeah, it's totally is I think yeah Keyshot Keyshot is a light program but basically or a scenery program but basically teaches you uh, or makes a photo for you with all that rendering type of thing which is really nice and I just take my time with it even I probably going to do some photo bash, uh, kit bashing, and by the way, kit bashing is like photo bashing, but just in three D. You you take some assets and basically put them together, or create some assets and put them together. Your kit kit bashing is a really nice thing. And let me cut it actually. Let me cut the box. I really like a cut box. Now it's time to practice how to, to cut them in half and how to see things way more easier for me. And by the way, I actually could practice how to, the approach of my paintings, uh, of my drawings. The way how fast I can go with my lines. It's also a really nice way to practice those kind of things. One, two, three, four. You get slow, slow, less lines. Okay, again, hard, less, lesser, nice. Now we do that in kind of the opposite way. We try to draw based on direction. Now we draw it again. And it looks like a leather or something, you know, or some type of polyester which is also really nice. And probably we can draw different kinds of shapes. Maybe dragon scale or scale. How does scale look like? That's a big question. And you can practice that non-stop, which is really nice. Number two, number one, nice. Now we go the opposite way. Make the lines way more harder. Now less, less. There are different ways of practicing, uh, especially when it comes uh, your intention behind uh, what you want to do. For example, I try to do characters. I think this one is really important in my opinion <laughs> to learn how to draw textures because then you have an easier time to actually ap apply those things in a much more uh, simplistic way maybe I draw the front side way more harder you know 
then it basically looks like a scale. Let's zoom out. Nice. I did my circles. Uh, I think it's time to do a couple of boxes again. Uh, what team do I want uh, to talk with you guys? Uh, yes. I, about intention uh, or planning your your whole entire year. I usually plan my entire year how what I want to study. Every time when it when it comes uh, when I did a year, I basically write everything down um, where I really fail at. For example, light theory. I don't know how to approach it faster. For example, then I draw it. Uh, then I write it down. Or for example, I. I sometimes have no clue how to do 3D. Okay, which program is it? Oh, probably because of ZBrush, or probably because it is something completely different. It is nice then to have a list, and then you can decide uh, what you want to learn, you know? Uh, what you want to learn first, because you have all your mistakes written down on paper. And now the only thing is deciding which mm, kind of mistake you want to fix first or which one is the most important part of what basically fixes some of your drawings mistakes or uh, the way how you approach different things probably it could be uh, something what something life-changing you know or something really philosophical maybe your personality because based based on Depending what it is, it could really help you. And it's art. People forget art is. It has two kinds of forms. It has our abstractional, abstract side of it, which is really for philosophical, and it has a visual, visual side of it. But the thing about it, which is the third thing, is personality. And personality says much more I think in my opinion which is actually translated to taste your taste in drawings and other type of stuff I think this needs to be addressed really much when it comes not being angry when you fail or not being uh, being comfortable and I accept your failures or accept the way how other people criticize you I think it plays a really big role uh, in your uh, level where you try to learn something because the more probably you listen to it and the more you filter yourself the more you understand that we are all sitting to the same boat and we accept criticism in the highest form then maybe or based on the personality okay let me just say let me try let me try and pretend i i was lying non-stop to to people and let me just say that okay it is just just saying uh I'll, which is absolutely not true by the way but let me just try and pretend i lied to, to a bunch of people and this lie i I don't want to lie anymore. I want to be honest much more. And I know for a fact that this, if I fix that, I, I definitely get to, uh, to be a better person or listening to, to a person. Maybe I can not be that angry. What makes me angry, you know, in my life? I think that is really important to understand your feelings and how you approach certain things to not being frustrated in your art itself yourself you know because sometimes it it just straight up happens and you ask yourself why did i react like that did i re react uh, because uh, i don't accept criticism or do, do i react because uh, I'm frustrated about my paintings, then why did I react towards the other person if he tried to criticize me or if he just gave me a critique to help me out, you know? 
maybe criticism is just a, a, a term that basically describes something. I want to help you. I just want to help you out. And that maybe makes you a better person. If you probably would understand it. And then based on that, uh, you feel then probably way more comfortable with your paintings or drawings. And then probably you listen to interviews, philosophical types of things, you know. That that plays also a huge factor uh, when it comes to studying or learning how to study. Or excitement also plays a big role. Why do you want to do that? Do you want to do that because you love it? But why do you love it? Do you love, love video games? Probably that's why. You want to create your own video games and then... Later on, you're going to be a way more better person, I think, in my opinion. If you just try to understand yourself and get better with it. And then later on, your fundamentals, not not based on skill level. Because sometimes you get frustrated. Okay, it happens. But then you ask yourself why that frustration happens in the first place. And that's, I think, is one one of the most important steps if it, if it comes to, to studying things. Or studying not only about art, studying about life, how it works, you know. Because one thing is what the environment and character art or creature art uh, teach me. And that is, the world is a beautiful place. So let's all live together and... There are so many nice, beautiful places in the world that makes our life way more comfortable. Where we all live together, you know. And I think it's really a really a nice thing to say for sure that our world is so diverse when it comes. Look, if you look, for example, at Africa, there are so many desert places or Saharas, or all that other type of stuff. History. History is also an amazing thing. Um, learning about history, I think, in my opinion, is a really beautiful thing. That's why I chose to be an environment artist. Because not only it teaches me something, I can also learn from, uh, from it, you know? And by the way, what I mean by teaching... Uh, Basically, learning the fundamentals or learning how to draw a house or how to draw a desert or how to draw all these diffi uh, difficult type of things that comes into mind and plays into mind. And that's why I would never give up how, uh, studying or teaching or learning uh, those things. Uh, yeah. Coming into that mindset is hard. I, I can actually understand it. But then after you understand your mindset and how it works, you're gonna get way more better. And it's so inspired to actually just study, relax, listen to some music, probably learn about something, trick your mind, trick your brain. It just takes you... Uh, just a line, you know, <laughs> which is really, really a nice thing to think like that, I think, in my opinion. Especially when it comes to to just practicing those things. You see? <laughs> That's beautiful, right? Uh, it's such a nice thing, and now I can probably cut, make some cuts. Probably add different type of boxes now. But yeah, that is my philosophical mindset when it comes to it. I always try to be a better person and try to understand the other people's side of it. I don't pick fights at this. <laughs> and yeah, that's. I, I think that's what keeps you guys a little bit off uh, too. It's okay. Now, as you probably guys see, 
I practice now my boxes with volume now because I wanted to I want to understand how the all of those things work together. I I think practicing first simplistic, you know, type of thing then in volume, then probably adding those type of boxes into that. We can also approach it in different ways. Uh, but I think I'm done with shapes, right? Have I done cylinders? Let's see. Probably cylinders. Uh, yeah, I've done cylinder shapes, textures. Those are the, the things how to approach lines. You know, drawing 8 and 10 times. Oh, there's one thing that I didn't practice, and that's onion lines, but it's okay. I'm gonna do that now. Uh, practice slim lines. Nice. Hard soft, hard soft, hard soft, hard soft. Because sometimes it's really important to draw hard and soft. Uh, in terms of line theory, when it comes to line theory, I think. Uh, so actually, let's you teach a little bit about line theory because you see, I actually did some overlapping things. Uh, when things overlap, I I make them a little bit bigger from the line or way more thicker because it basically shows okay, this one goes in that direction, this one goes in that direction, which makes things way more clear, in my opinion. Imagine having an object here and an object here. We need to learn then how we apply this overlapping thing into that. And the best way is, I think, practicing with different kinds of objects. A cube is, I think, the best way if it comes to that. Oh, you draw still life. It's also a thing. I think plays a, a small role into that. So, okay. I think, uh, yeah, lines. So there are three different types of lines and three different types of weights, uh, line weights, which come into place. Um, we have three different approaches in lines. We have hard lines, you know, soft. Soft, come on, thank you. And invisible lines. Invisible lines are basically like this. Uh, they cut themselves and you can see a sense of uh, abstraction comes into place. Uh, then we can go from hard, uh, soft to hard, hard to soft. And the same thing here. Hard to soft. I mean, soft to hard. Soft to hard. And hard to soft. Uh, this is invisible, but also so, uh, hard invisible. And I actually practice with you guys that after that. Uh, after I wrote everything down. Because imagine that we say a character, a tree. I go really hard on those shapes. Then I try to make an overlap here. And basically based on my lines, I can take it everywhere. This could overlap, this probably is a really 
big uh, foreshortening type of stuff, you know, where it goes outside the picture. Uh, and you see, this is a really big shape, big shape. Now it's time to make middle shapes out of it. And the textures are the small shapes. If it comes to that, maybe those could be very more visible. And this is the invisible line. It's basically an abstraction type of thing. I can actually delete those, make it way more better. And you can train those based on the way how comfortable, which, what are you comfortable you are with drawing. It's a really nice thing to do. Or oh, probably it looks like a pipe which takes out out there, which is really fantasy-like because maybe the toxin gets out of, of it and people put it on that just because of the toxin. Just an idea. But at least you get what i telling you guys from hard to soft. And there's also another third thing because this is number both of those. This is, those are free, those are free, and this is basically line theory, line theory. And practice line theory only with things that you are comfortable with, because after you are not, because if you are not comfortable, right now I can absolutely do a box because I practice that really hard now. And I am now way more comfortable with it. I can probably do do a plane or two point perspective or three point perspective. But yeah, line theory. This is line theory, and especially my course requires to do that. Only to do this based on shapes and perspective. That's why I'm teaching you guys probably now way more because now I have at, le at least a little bit of a hint where where I want to go with you guys. Um, I completely forgot this part to tell you. So I'm really sorry if it's not written somewhere because it's actually really important uh, how you you do these lines. Probably there are also textures, texture lines, depending how you do it. But let me do hard from soft now again. Hard, soft, hard, soft. And let me say this is a branch, okay? And probably it has some, some middle lines, uh, middle shapes. Probably this is the small shape. Yeah. Oh, the texture is is the really big thing. Now I can probably add textures into that. Make it really simplified. Then later on we can actually add those things. Add much more detail. At least you know what it is or what it could be rather than I really like to is I draw them way too much. It is I think the most comfortable thing. But if it comes to hard surface, I'm also comfortable to draw architecture. I think I'm in love with environment. And if it comes to that, you just need to practice. You need at least the knowledge of shapes or how to uh, at least how to apply those shapes and where are they going based on your reference. You can also trace over reference to see actually how does it work, you know, like what Ethan Becker told you, okay, use reference, draw over shapes, see the dimension into that, which is actually also volume, volume dimension. You can call it how you want. Both of, of them are probably right. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. 
So with it, I explained to you how line weight or line, a little bit of line theory, how it could work. Because not only we need this to understand, the practice is in textures actually too. So knowing, knowing how, how it fades everything away or where the light comes from, you know? It's also a nice thing to actually practice that. This is for shortening, by the way. For shortening. Now I'm way more comfortable. Ellipsis. Uh, what else? This one is volume. Now I can actually teach you the third hour how to practice perspective because now we practice shape and and I teach you guys a little bit about practicing perspective. Uh, yeah, volume and these are just shape, shape or freehand perspective. Oh, and by the way, small fun facts. If you draw characters in a scenery with environment, you know, make sure what is the focus. Because if you draw a character, sometimes it's the focus, the character. And we need to add much more details on that one. So it's always about 60 up to 70 uh, to 40 ratio, which is 40% sometimes on the environment if it comes with a character. Environment. In concept, uh, because sometimes you need to create mood boards, mood paintings, uh, what basically explains, okay, where's the focus around those characters and 60% if a character is right in the shot, in the middle of the shot, that's, uh, he needs much more details. So 60% details. Sometimes it's actually the opposite way. If the focus is actually the background, you know, and I have a character here and he sees an amazing scenery, you know, probably with Chai, Chinese buildings all over here, a rice fields, you know. This one needs to be 60% details or 70% detail. And this is treated only like a ratio. It could be the opposite direction. It could be this character, you know. You can also make details here, but then switch it around here. So details, and this is uh, less details. I always write shapes into that because shapes I treat it basically with a big form. I have, I can even draw like this, you know, and I treat it literally like small, uh, a really big shape, which makes me understand, okay, how does it work? Because the more you zoom in, the harder it gets. The harder it gets to draw. So take a step back. If you want to do details, just do it like this, you know? Zoom a little bit in, but don't zoom totally in where it actually cuts the picture. Because then, basically, if you make a mistake and add too much details, uh, you, you overhelm uh, the guy what actually looks at your paintings and his eye doesn't rest. Not, uh, on your picture. So at least if everything is together here, it actually can rest. Okay, he looks here and then, oh, that's a nice thing. 
but their attention focus is sometimes only five seconds or maybe less. Uh, I think four, it was four. But at least you understand me uh, if it comes to paintings. Right now I tried, I don't try to do details at all. I tried to go back and then relaxed. I just draw based on shape, big, medium, small. I don't like that, I erase it again, and then I sketch it again. I think this is the best way, and I always draw cha chaotic, by the way. This is, I draw Feng you know? Because probably it's the most comfortable thing ever. And I always take, as I said, big shapes. Big shapes, don't forget it, big shapes. But yeah, same here as I said, 70, but then 30% details. Because we have a composition, we can focus only on this one with details, this one and this one. So it has 30%, and each of them has 10%. No one, nothing is way too big of a detail thing when it comes to that. Detail and less detail. Uh, let me take a break here. Uh, we only have 40 or 50 minutes. The rest of the time I'm just gonna practice uh, perspective with you guys, drawing boxes, you know, 10 minutes each uh, type of thing, you know, one point, two point, and three point, and I think three point, I I hope we get to the rest of the three hours, so five hours break, and after the five hours we do that, okay, see us in five, uh, I mean five minutes, I'm sorry, <laughs> I said five hours. Five minutes, five minutes break, okay.
Okay, I'm back. Let's try one point perspective and two point perspective. Um, one point perspective is, I think, a much more easy approach if you want to draw a hall or something else, you know, or an entire city based on that. I use the shift most of the time. Uh, is everything okay with the sound here? Yeah. Um, I didn't talk about why we need to practice those things. Uh, the reason why we need to practice those things is because we see that in reference, as I said before. But then later on, after half of a year, we really realize that in terms of in terms of uh, how should I say that in terms of reference you start to seeing shapes in reference and perspective in reference so it's then a way more eas easier thing to do that uh, to learn to see things seeing things like a box seeing things like a cylinder or seeing th things how you are you would approach them. The more comfortable you are drawing in perspective or drawing loose in perspective or drawing immediate in perspective, the easier it gets also to do it right. To do it right in the first place. You de then don't need to fix millions of things that comes into play uh, when you draw in perspective because uh, let me let me explain that with a box somewhere here. I know for a fact, for a fact, okay, I cannot manipulate those kind of thing because it moves only towards the axis point. So I can easily draw a plane here at the beginning, the back side of it, then adjust it based on that point. And now I have, have a perfect box lined up. Let's do another one. Back side first, front side after. Uh, come on, thank you. Now for the rest of the time I think you guys could ask me some questions it's completely fine but keep it no just straight up ask me questions if it comes to practicing or doesn't matter what it is it could be everything about philosophy all that other stuff I could actually paint something here. I draw it. Uh, it overlaps here. Five things. I think five things are enough. Maybe make the box a little bit thicker. Nice. Okay, maybe another box here. What is basically tall? Goes, I think, in, into no. Uh, I think I should add it here. Yeah, add this here somewhere. I cannot manipulate on the sides. I can probably delete this to make it way more easier to see. Nice. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think we have it in one point. Oh, probably two points. And the problem by two point is. 
uh, draw first the front part of it and then after it the back part because we always see those things uh, it can easier establish then after that but here here we can only manu not manipulate this one so we need to manipulate two things here which is also one of the side of it or maybe the other side of it depending what it could be I usually draw always points we draw based on the top then after that we go from the ground the opposite happens if you draw it on top of of the higher point for example I do it like this now it's the ground one I see it from below oh middle one of course I always choose the middle one then you have it Let me make the sides of it way more recognizable in case if you guys want to see where the boxes are. Uh, one I think in front. Let's draw one in front of it. Somewhere here. Nice. Nice. Okay, because it's all it's overlapping now. That's why. Uh, I think I should overlap it like this. Yeah. Nice. So probably I can cut it too. Let's cut it from here. We basically see a couple of parts. And this, we go always from the ground, never from, from the other side. This is two points. Okay, nice. We can also create one what is probably really high, you know, based from down. Then goes again down, back, back, nice. Because probably it's in the background. This is probably mid-ground, mid-ground, uh, this could be back and base. If we try to paint something, you know, this could be our picture. Only this. And maybe there is a guy fighting, you know, or there's a monolith. And that's the nice thing about perspective. We, we, the thing is, many people always draw the perspective inside of the two-point uh, drawing. But the truth is, uh, it's heavily distorted then. The camera lens cannot uh, recognize it. Maybe as a hundred and something millimeter, you know, as a POV. But yeah. I think I'm done. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven boxes, nice in case if we want to to make them way more nicer this needs to be thick really thick because it overlaps in so many different ways okay nice so this is one point one point two points 
now to three points, and I think this is the hardest one <laughs> because it's it's straight up completely uncomfortable. At first we do the two point and then the three point. Because based on the third point, we go non-stop out and if I'm honest, it looks then later on like that. And based on that, we need somehow to figure out all those parts. It goes crazy left and right. Let me actually do that with it. Usually we don't use that perspective only if we want to make for shortening, make something for shorten, you know, or it could be a box, it could be everything. But, but we go, as I said, based down, down first. And then always down first. Okay, nice. Again. Set another point. I always do these anchor points because I think uh, it makes me, based on those many lines, it's actually then much more easier to see where everything is. Okay, let's clean that up. Nice. Uh, let's draw another one. Based on this point now. Which is heavily distorted. Heavily. That's why I would not recommend to draw three point. It's the most, uh, I think, annoying thing. Whatever exists, we usually do just one point or two point. It's way more comfortable to draw with that. Uh, this is the down below part. Nice. Now we have our box. It's it is really heavily distorted, but at least you can see it. I think I do another one, but this is the last one. I think I don't like it at all. From top now down, right? Uh, yeah, middle. I always chose the middle one. Uh, I think I take this one. And you don't always need to to select the access point. Uh, this one is wrong. It is absolutely okay if you don't select the access point or you draw. Uh, not on the top of the axis. It makes things much more... Um, it's harder, but it's then easier for you guys later on uh, to draw in those perspectives. Because then you can see it everywhere. So, yeah. That's one point, that's two points, and this one is three points. Actually, let me, let me brush it off. Come on, delete it. Oh, wrong layer. Nice. I cut this one in a way too. So this is three points.
And I think uh, that's it. Homework, no time. You have no time frame. It's actually practicing 1.2 point, 2.3 point, point. and based on those, this kind of reference. Let's take it together. Just to keep in mind what I need to to actually uh, give you guys a second work. Oh yeah, this one. This is number two. As a homework, just practice boxes and probably then shapes, uh, other types of shapes. Or just practice those shapes. It could be everything, you know, here on this type of thing. Or cylinders or textures. Just for an hour or two. Be comfortable, relax. It is okay to make mistakes. Even I did it here on, on this type of thing. Uh, you did your box wrong, by the way. The reason why that's happening is because your axis was not aligned. And I'm talking about this one. Because if it would be that we go from here, This is the right one. This is the right point of it. Let me actually take it out. It is a little bit distorted, probably that's why it does not work. But your lines are not accurate on the vanishing point. No, it's right. I have a question, one point perspective. I keep ending up with this problem. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. As I told you, all of these lines in the middle need to nail exactly. If it doesn't, then you get this distorted uh, the wrong kind of access point. Because as soon as it hits, it needs to be on the axis. Exactly perfect on the vanishing points. It doesn't need that perfect to be, but that's the thing that holds you off. You see? Now it's accurate based on that. This thing, if you don't nail it immediately, that's why it gets wrong. Yeah, vanishing point is is the doom point. Because if you don't nail it, the axis axis 9, then you really have a hard time to figure out, okay, why well, is it wrong? Probably the axis. It's not direct into exact point because I can go like this or like this and it still would be wrong, that line, right? This is one thing that I want to keep it up. But yeah, as I said, homework are practicing Number one, this, number two, this, and number three, this. And just as a warm up, you know, it could be any of that. The more you do it, the better you get with it. And then later on, you can also try it with ellipses. I couldn't actually, based on those lines, I can actually try to make an ellipse out of this. 
and knowing how it's stretched, a box, how it's stretched, how it squishes, you know, together, how it bends. That is squishing, bends, distorted, you know. If you manage to do that in perspective, you you win. You absolutely win. Right now I made the simplest thing ever, which is perspective with boxes. At least uh, because I practice those things over and over again. So let me end here. I'm gonna post that on the assignment. And it's just a warm up. Don't treat it like a homework, treat it like a warm up immediately at the beginning at your, uh, at uh, where you try immediately to do a line in your painting, you know? Uh, I mean drawing, or where you immediately try to practice something, you know, with the intention behind it. It's just absolutely clear. Uh, it was nice. I hope you guys have a nice day, and in the third part of it, we're actually going to to draw to make our first sketches, uh, which is wait a minute, just to keep it clear, we did we did mood boards, perspective. Shape language and design. I actually <laughs> covered this up a little bit, but they need to be covered a little bit more. Uh, creative thinking like the game developer. Mood board, how to research, I actually did. The next thing is, I think, design techniques. Uh, no, sketching, something, yeah. Environment templates. And probably also environment architecture. We're gonna try to figure out uh, different kinds of shapes, how they work, probably. And yeah, it's going to be fun. So, we see us guys.